Hello, hello, lovely listeners. All of you ghouls and goblins. And everything in between. Welcome to Across the Veil with Zelda and Emma. If you're new around here, hello, hello, and welcome to Across the Veil. I'm Zelda Kimball, and this is my co-host, Emma Ragsdale. Hi, that's me. (laughs) Hi, Emma. (laughs) We are two best friends, and we are both spooky bitches. So spooky. In honor of our new podcast cover art done by one of our other friends and other spooky bitch, Amelia Weigel, aka Big Jinx. Um, Thank you. We love it. She's fantastic. She's spooky. I'm like mildly obsessed with our new cover art. I do love it very, very much. It shows how I feel. Like me dancing around a fire with a coven of witches. That's what I am trying to do all the time. And it just brought that mental image to light. It's in my heart and now it is art. Ooh, love the rhyme. So in honor of this new podcast cover art, we wanted to talk about yet another spooky lady. Yes, we did. And I challenged Emma this week because the scariest thing I can currently think about is the future. It's just horrifying. It's horrifying. What's going to happen? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Nobody knows. So, um... Emma, who are we going to talk about this week? We are going to talk about Mother Shipton, an English soothsayer and prophetess and witch. Yeah. Think the female Nostradamus, if you've heard of him. Or what if Nostradamus is the male Mother Shipton? I like that better. Let's change that narrative. Goddamn right. Mother Shipton was born as Ursula Thonville in 1488 to a 15-year-old mother, Agatha Soothtail. That's what a blast name for somebody who gives birth to a witch. Iconic. Also, not a great last name for my lisp, but... Soothtail. Soothtail. It's really (laughs) unstruggling. Legend has it, she was born in the middle of a violent thunderstorm in a cave on the banks of River Nid in Maresborough in North Yorkshire. Legends that surround the birth of Ursula claim that she did not cry after she was born, but instead cackled when the storm stopped. Damn, right out of the coochie and she's already controlling the weather. (laughs) That's icon behavior. (laughs) That is icon behavior. That's how I wish I was born, honestly. But no, I was born on a Tuesday. I was also born on a Tuesday. Hey! Hey! Look at that! Anyways, her young mother was apparently an orphan who would not tell the town folk who the father of her baby was. So, obviously, rumors spread that poor Agatha fell victim to the charms of the devil, which resulted in Ursula's birth. Obviously. Obviously. You know, a teenager doesn't want to say who's mm-hmm. the father of her unwed baby. Next step. The devil! Obvious conclusion. Obviously. But other rumors, which I prefer, state that Agatha herself was a witch and summoned the devil to conceive his child. Which, like, girl, you go. She said, I'll be a single mother. I just need the other component. Mm -hmm. That's all I need. I'm ready for it. I'm 15 and I'm good to go. (laughs) Do you think he does like it on a donation basis? Like, do you think if I like called him up, he'd offer? I think you have to do like a ritual Mm -hmm. to get him to like (laughs) come over. But (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, other than that, I feel like he's, uh, unless you go with the whole like antichrist thing where it has to be like a specific person. So ostracized from society for having this child, Agatha and Ursula lived in that cave for two years before the abbot of Beverly took pity on them and found a local family to take in Ursula. Agatha, on the other hand, was taken to a nunnery far away, never to see her daughter again. Ursula grew up in Knaresborough and was described as a strange child, one might say a witchy child, since she sort of embodied our idea of a witch. Her nose was large and crooked, she had a hunchback, and her legs were twisted. While her foster family accepted her, because of her looks, she was often taunted by the locals and found herself quite estranged from them. Because of that, she continued to spend her time near the cave where she was born, finding it easier to isolate herself. A fun fact yes, about the name Ursula is that it comes from Ursus, which means bear, and bears live in caves. And I just <laughs> think that's kind of a fun little... She must really feel akin to bears. Maybe it could, a bear was her familiar. I like that. Yes, bear is a familiar. But it was in that cave where she studied the forest, the flowers and herbs, and made remedies and potions with them. She spent her entire childhood doing that and learning their medicinal properties. So Ursula clearly had an interesting childhood, and it only gets more interesting. One legend claims that when Ursula was two years old, her foster mother left her alone in the house to run an errand. But when she came back, she found the front door wide open. Scared, she called the neighbors to come help, and they heard a loud 
squealing like a thousand cats in concert throughout the house. Ursula's cradle was empty. They searched frantically throughout the house and finally found Ursula in the kitchen, naked and cackling, perched on the iron bar where pot hooks were fastened above the fireplace. Nice. I love that for her. Good for you, Ursula. As Ursula learned more about plants and herbs, she became an invaluable resource for the townspeople as an herbalist, even though Loki, they're still assholes to her. Ursula got the name Shipton at age 24 when she married a young carpenter from New York named Tobias Shipton. Because the town still sucked, some thought that she had bewitched him because you just can't let her be happy and be in love. Yeah, like, no, of course this carpenter wouldn't love an ugly forest woman. But like, some guys are into that and some girls are into that. Cottage core. Yeah, cottage core. It's huge now. She would have been killing it in this era. Her TikTok pop off. Oh, popping off in that cave. But sadly, he died only two years later. And the grief of losing her husband and the town whispering each other saying that she was responsible for his death caused Ursula Shipton to move back into the woods and return to the cave where she was born. But she continued to create potions and herbal remedies for the people. She became known as Mother because she was the oldest woman in the village. Eventually, her name became more and more well-known. People would travel from far away to see her and get potions and spells from this mysterious soothsayer, Mother Shipton. As she became more famous and her confidence grew, she revealed that she could see the future and began to tell prophecies. She started small, just telling the future of people in the town. But when her prophecies kept coming true, she started telling prophecies about the monarchy and the future of the world. So I really love this because it kind of goes, so this is like far back in our, you know, cultural history, but going even further back, oracles of Delphi mm -hmm. would also be in caves and they'd be inhaling, you know, volcanic ash that would get them high and they'd start spouting shit and people were like, that's prophecies. Mm -hmm. Mother Shipton was probably just doing a shit ton of weed <laughs> or magic mushrooms and going she off. She knew all about herbs. Like, go f good for her. She was probably getting high and somebody was like, will Timothy fall in love with thine eyes? <laughs> and she was like, King James the second will be beheaded. <laughs> Good for her. She's having a time. I feel like I am a modern prophet when I get drunk on tequila because I just start running my mouth and who knows? Who knows what I say? I mean, I've heard what you say and I wouldn't say prophet. I'd say more like, like truth sayer. That is true. Yeah. But truth sayer, not soothsayer. It's still a talent. Mm -hmm. It is. Truth sayer, not soothsayer. When you spout off whatever's in your head when you're drunk. So back to Mother Shipton. Her prophecies were often in cryptic verse. She predicted wars, rebellions, and all types of natural disasters. Her prophecies were eventually published in some form or another, over 20 times between 1641 and 1700. Eventually, she became England's most famous prophetess. She foretold the fates of several rulers within and just after her lifetime, as well as the invention of iron ships, the Great Fire of London in 1666, and the defeat of the Spanish Armada, so, obviously, I have to read a few of her prophecies. No, we have to. Tell me the profs. So she predicted Elizabeth I's reformation. Quote, A maiden queen shall reign anon. The papal powers shall bear no sway. Rome's creed shall hence be swept away. Ooh, her rhymes. Those are tight. Shakespeare said whomst? Shakespeare has nothing on Shipton. I was trying to see if it's in iambic pentameter. The papal power shall bear no sway. Rome's creed shall hence be swept away. It's an iambic pentameter. Shakespeare whomst? She really did iambic pentameter before Shakespeare did. And I don't know if it's a translation thing because where we got some of these prophecies from, ha they have been translated mm -hmm. from like, you know, when they used to use Y's and W's in places where they shouldn't be. Ye old English. But it's still iambic pentameter and that's pretty toy. Pretty toit. She was before, this is before Shakespeare was alive. Well, she was alive in the 1400s, but she became famous in the 1600s and 1700s. But I think that her prophecies of the far off future are by far the funniest, just because of the way that she talks about them. So here's our favorite of Mother Shipton's prophecies concerning the fate of women in our era. And now a word in uncouth rhyme of what shall be in future time. For in the wondrous far-off days, the women shall adopt a craze. To dress like men and trousers wear, and cut off their lovely locks of hair. 
They'll ride astride with brazen brow, as witches on a broomstick now. Then love shall die and marriage cease, and nations wane as births decrease. The wives shall fondle cats and dogs, and men live much the same as hogs. Damn! I love it! This track of the year. Incredible, iconic, not incorrect. Not incorrect in the slightest. I mean, I tell my mom all the time. I'm like, you're not going to get grandchildren. You're going to get grandcats. And that's fair. I can't promise anything. I, I'm wearing trousers right now. I'm not wearing any pants, if I'm being honest. And good for you. I respect that. There you go, internet. <laughs> <laughs> but like, good for her. Good for her. She knew. Honestly, she knew. We'd be friends. Mother Shipton's legacy continues, and she is still considered one of the greatest prophets ever. But a lot of people believe she never existed. There are no written references to her in the 1500s, and the moniker Mother Shipton doesn't appear in print until 1641. And many prophecies accredited to her have been proven false to sell pamphlets or books. In fact, her famous end-of-the-world prophecy was proven completely false, though kind of hilariously. It made a ton of people in 1862 freak out. Like, think like Y2K or 2012 level freak out, but it's the Victorian era, so they just go to the fields to pray. I mean, maybe people did that then too. So it turned out that that specific prophecy was actually just written by some dude who eventually admitted it, and it was like in the 1800s as well that he wrote it. So wasn't her, wasn't true. So many people say that she's like Robin Hood or King Arthur. So folklore, but has some basis in fact. The local legend of this wise woman grew in the 1600s because her words could be published and widespread. But since she died long before that, we just can't really know if the words on the page are truly hers. However, there is a letter written in 1537 by King Henry VIII during a Catholic rebellion in Yorkshire he claims that a nearby witch is inciting the rebellion because of her prophecies. Yorkshire is near Knaresborough, so could the witch he mentions be Mother Shipton? It could. It could. I don't see a reason why not. It could also be the what spawned everything. Mm -hmm. Like it could actually be a woman named Mother Shipton, but then that grew from there. You know? Yeah. But there are lots of reasons for her not being real, like embellishments, but. She's pretty fucking rad. Really rad. And she was never prosecuted for witchcraft despite openly practicing. And she even managed to not get burned at the stake and died at the old age of 73 in 1561. Hey, a round of, a round of applause for Shippy, Mother Ships. A little part of me, though, is like, it kind of makes her a little bit more unbelievable because she didn't get burned for being a witch or a woman. But also, she was in this tiny little town, and she was probably the only person that was really helping these people out. True. She was probably like, not to be uncouth, but like for unwed mothers like her own, like mm -hmm. special herbs could give unwed mothers abortions or herbal remedies could stop people who like fell in the field and scraped their leg. And yeah. like instead of them having to like cut the entire leg off because of gangrene. True, true, true. She would have put some stuff on that to heal it. Or she was getting them high on her magic mushrooms and they were like, <laughs> this lady's rad. Uh, let's do a rebellion. And the king was mad because she wouldn't sell him her mushrooms. They're like... She's uggles, but she's a good time, which is what they say about me. <laughs> That's my Tinder bio. <laughs> Literally. Another, another one for the books. She's uggles, but she's a good time. <laughs> At best, that's how I think about myself. And she was just in a cave. She was just in a cave. Vibing. Vibing hard. Imagine the decor she probably had. Vines everywhere. Stalag tight stalag mites. But speaking of this cave, you can still visit it with the petrifying pool and everything, where you can learn more about this awesome, hopefully real lady. Yeah. And the pool, which was part of the reason that they thought she was the daughter of the devil, really can turn things into stone, which I think is very cool. It just takes three to five months, but it is because of evaporation and an unusually high mineral count. So apparently like people have thrown teddy bears in there. Oh, so they get like calcified. Yeah. Very cool. So that is Mother Shipton, greatest prophetess possibly of all time. Would be fun at a dinner party. Would be. I would like to believe that she exists, ideally. I think she must have in some capacity. There was a witch of York. Mm -hmm. And so we know that that's a fact. And whether or not she was actually called Mother Shipton, 
or it was someone else who was basically all of these things and then influenced people to write more and attribute them to her. Mm-hmm. The Witch of York is pretty cool. This old bat who lived in a cave and helped out a town, you know, pretty cool. Dope. Dope as hell. Mother Shipton, would you be our friend? Please be our friend. If your spirit is out there and if ghosts are real, um, please haunt me. Stop being thirsty for hauntings. I can't. I want them to be real. It makes the ghouls afraid of us. That's Maybe that's why I haven't seen a ghost. Mm, they're afraid of you. I already look like one of them. Maybe they're like, eh, we'll leave her alone. There's a ghost walking through your house. It sees you walking out of your bedroom door in the morning and it goes, fuck, what the fuck is that thing? Fuck, what the fuck? It's, it's terrifying. Jesus, you can't just walk out of your room like that. Damn it, Julia, we have to move. The humans here are too scary. They're horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but for now, we're done. So we'll see you guys next time. Across the van.